G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today, I am going to do a tier maker where I rank every player that switched clubs in the 2024 trade period and the free agency. And I'll make assessments as to, I suppose, what value they have to their new club, which would be kind of based on my opinion of them in terms of their quality as a player. So I've got five categories here. I've got star talents, guns, decent pickups, short-term value players, and the fifth category will be long shots to really add value, of which there's a handful in this. So we'll be using tier maker again, and instead of actually making my own tier maker, which can be quite boring and laborious, I have noticed my friend UCAT has done this exact video with this exact tier maker. So we'll give him some credit, go check out the UCAT YouTube channel. If you're wondering what UCAT looks like, well, have a look at this screen grab I captured from a vlog of Derby 58 where the West Coast Eagles belted Fremantle mercilessly. And you can see in this picture the exact instant his little heart breaks. <laughs> He's gonna hate that. So yes, UCAT has done this video and I'm gonna do it my own way as well with my own categories. But thanks for putting in the hard yards there, UCAT. Before we crack into it, thank you once again to all those people who have subscribed recently. It's been a, an amazing period of growth for this channel. The percentage of people who watch my videos who are subscribed is got up to about 45%, which is the best it's been in months. So thank you so much for those who have subscribed. And if there's anyone out there who is enjoying my content and wants to see more, I'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing to this channel. All right, it's time to crack in. Let's start ranking players based on my assessments of their value to their new team. So a good way to start this is putting a player in each category. This is the way I like to do things. So we set up a bit of a framework. So who is a genuine star talent to switch clubs in this trade period? Um, I, you know, I'm gonna say Shea Bolton is a star talent. You know, maybe he's not a, a week in, week out A grader, like I've said before, but on his day, like he is still outstanding. His worst games aren't bad, but his best games can be match winning in general. And I do think this is, a great move for where Fremantle are at. Now, privately as a West Coast fan, I really hope this doesn't take them to the next step, but I can certainly see the argument for why adding a match winner in the Ford 50 is a great move for where Fremantle are at. And regardless of the cost, so we are separating this from cost, uh, but just purely on the talent that the player has, I think Shea Bolton goes into this top category. But who's a player maybe on the one rung down? Probably put Perryman in here. I think Perryman is a gun. Um, and we may have different opinions on that. I think he's a little bit of an underrated player at GWS but he's not he's not a star there's absolutely no way and yes a lot was said of his was it rumored to be 900k i can't remember if that was actually confirmed but that is kind of always the case with free agency players do get overpaid a little bit regardless i think he is a very good player i think he exceeds that of decent pickup and i think this was a great move for collingwood for where they're at in their premiership window and it didn't cost them any draft picks because well they didn't really have any more to give what about this bottom category here um no disrespect to the players but we have to categorize some players as a long shot to really add value so maybe young harry sharp here from the brisbane lions i think he's played 16 games in four years and moving to another club for more opportunity now this isn't a serious comment about me seeing a lot of harry sharp and thinking nah he's not gonna make it but let's be real this is a low cost sort of long shot move here from melbourne to, to bolster some depth um he's He's relatively ready-made as opposed to, you know, drafting an 18-year-old. So support the move. I have no issue with the strategy of trying to pick up underappreciated talents at other clubs. But let's be real here. He probably comes into the bottom category when you compare him to the other players in this list. Decent pickup. Who is somebody that is not quite a gun, but will probably have a little bit more value than, say, players in their 30s? Maybe Jack Graham from West Coast, actually. It's, it's going to be hard to really forecast what value he adds to West Coast. I think he's there for uh, a variety of reasons, some intangible stuff, new coach, new system, plugs a big demographic gap in West Coast list, and he's only 26, signed on a four-year deal, so it's not short-term value. Um, and he is a dual premiership player, I think. I think he played in two, right? So he's still a decent player, but he's probably not on the gun level. I don't think anyone's expecting him to, you know, play as well as a Harry Perryman next year. So I think Jack Graham is a good start to that category. What about short-term value? This is probably a category for where you're going to stick a lot of the over 30 players who move clubs in this year's trade period. Um, so maybe Jack Darling, actually. You know, um, it's unclear how many goals he's going to keep for North, but, you know, structurally he adds something. Leadership-wise, he adds something. But, you know, I don't think he's a long shot to add value. I think the, the, the intangible benefit here for Darling is what is in it for North, as well as adding some support for Larky. But he's on two to three years. I mean, I suppose three years is not a bad deal, but I think he's going to turn 33 next season. So let's just put him in short-term value. I'm going to put Rory Atkins in long shot to add value. Uh, no disrespect for the player. I always feel a bit uncomfortable with these sorts of things. However, um, you know, towards the end of his career and, um, you know, probably not in Port Adelaide's best 22. He's probably going to be a Sandville operator for most of the year. Um, and that's not just my opinion. I'm seeing that from Port fans everywhere. And I think 
Gold Coast giving him up getting the contract off their books. That was what's in it for them for Port Adelaide. Sure, it's some depth. I don't want to write him off, but he is probably a long shot to add value. He, he probably doesn't come into Port Adelaide's 22. So by definition, it's probably that. Nick Haynes is probably also short-term value. Um, you know, I've, I've, I won't lie, I've lost track a little bit of where Nick Haynes is at as a footballer, but he is 30 years old. I reckon he's born in 94 because he was in the inaugural Giants, uh, which makes him 31 next year. So if you're on the other side of 30, you probably fall into this category. Um, you know, he probably does fill a spot in their best 22, I'd imagine. I'm guessing by the fact that Carlton went for him. But best case scenario, he's he's good solid depth. Um, he could still be a good player. I'm not 100% sure. But if your best 22 for a handful of years, you firmly sit in this category, I would say. Uh, let's find another star talent. Who is another star talent? I'm going to say Bailey Smith. Um, again, this is very subjective, but I suppose that's the whole point. If this was objective and everyone agreed, there would be no need to make a video about this. But I think Bailey Smith will be, this is a bit of a hot take, but I think Bailey Smith will be the best player to move clubs this trade period. Now, not necessarily on resume. He is 23, which means he must have a late birthday. So he's going to be 24 when he joins Geelong. I think this could be a game-changing move for Geelong. And it comes at a time where they just got him for pretty good value. Coming off an ACL, sure. Um, look, is he one of those A-grade midfielders that maybe needs another A-grade midfielder to support him? Like in 2021, he was amazing. Could he have done it without Bont and Liberatore? I'm not sure, but we saw him in that 2021 final series. At that age, I think he's really impressive, and I have full confidence that Geelong are going to get the best out of Bailey Smith. So on talent, I think he is probably number one on this list. I know others will disagree with that, but that is my opinion. Who is a decent pickup? Should we say James Peatling? Now, James Peatling could be a gun. It's a little bit early in his story to really know. Um, you know, I think he had a pretty good year for GWS, and the cost that the Crows gave up for him was very modest. A future second, but also getting future thirds and fourths back. I mean, that's less than a future second. Um, for the season that Peatling had, I think that is good, but I, I don't know if I'd put him on the Perryman thing. So, so who's another gun? You know, I'd probably say Josh Battle. I think Josh Battle's a gun, you know, without being an A grader in his position. You know, intercept defender, very good player, um, but I don't think a star talent. And that led to a lot of the discourse around the free agency compensation pick, which was very generous for a player of his caliber, but he's still a good player in his prime. So I think he definitely exceeds decent pickup. And I think structurally he'll add a lot to Hawthorne. And again, one of those teams where you just know they're going to get the best out of him. So I think he is a gun and I think he will continue to be a gun. And I do think he is certainly more accomplished at this stage than a James Peatling. But I don't want to put a cap on James Peatling. It's just that I don't think I've seen enough of Peatling to necessarily put him in that gun category. I think that's fair. Dan Houston is probably the most accomplished player to move clubs. I think that's fair to suggest. So I highlighted Shea Bolton for his talent and Bailey Smith. But Dan Houston is won multiple All-Australians as a running defender. And, you know, I think... He probably is and should have been the most expensive player to move clubs, but that's not always the way it works, right? But nonetheless, Collingwood get an absolute A grader. They add him to Perryman. They've got a lot more run and drive. Those guys could interchange between midfield and back. Um, great move here for Collingwood. A great result, and I didn't see it coming really. But evidently, Port Adelaide did facilitate his wishes to get home and accepted the best deal that they could. But he is certainly in the star talent category. He's an absolute gun. Tom Campbell is a tricky one. Do you go long shots or uh, short-term value? Because he's over 30. And he's really there as depth. Do they intend to play him with Gorn? Mm, I think you probably put him in the catalog, uh, category below Darling and Haynes. I know Darling's probably best, past its best, and that's probably true of Haynes too, but they are also much more accomplished players than Campbell, so he will be there as depth. Maybe he's just one that doesn't really fit in either category, to be honest. Like, he could add value, short-term value, if Melbourne, you know, dare I say it, touch wood, if Max Gorn is, gets injured. Maybe you could make an argument if, if they intend to play him as second fiddle to Gorn and he plays for a couple of years, that is short-term value. But I think this one really is just depth on the list kind of stuff. But I, I don't know for sure. So with Melbourne here, not trying to you know fire a shot at their acquisitions. I think we just acknowledge they were both low cost, potentially low reward moves. They've still got picks five and nine in this year's draft. I think that was where they were aggressive. Who's another gun here? I think it's fair to say Liam Baker, I think. Um, I know he's just joined my football club, the West Coast Eagles, but he went for pick 14. That's not cheap in a strong draft. And, you know, he has been, he's never been all Australian calibre. Some of that might come down to playing multiple positions. Uh, maybe he's not quite at that level. If he, if he was all Australian calibre, he'd be up in this category here. But I think, you know, he compares pretty well to a, to a Perryman, for, for instance. And he's been top half a dozen in, in Richmond's best and fairest for a number of years now, not just in the years they were poor. So I think on resume, 
Liam Baker, who turns 27 in January, will have a pretty long period of strong performance there at West Coast. Well, that's the that's the hope anyway. Probably fill out a couple more of these long shot ones. Jacob Constanti, um, there was talk that he might get delisted and he was packaged in a trade with Luke Parker to get to North Melbourne. Uh, hasn't played a game of football yet, so I think textbook example of long shots. Don't have a strong opinion. He was a top 20 pick a couple of years ago but didn't earn another contract as far as I'm aware, the way that was going. So long shot, but nice little money ball move there for North Melbourne, it's fine. Dan Rioli, do we put him in star talent or guns? I think he firmly sits in guns personally, uh, which may be controversial. Uh, Richmond fans may think he probably constitutes star talent. I don't think so. I would put all of Houston, Bolton, and Smith as higher than that. But he is a very good player, and I don't have too much doubt he's going to be a good player in what could be a strong Gold Coast Suns next year. We, we don't know that for sure. Obviously, we have a lack of trust with the Suns because they haven't ever emerged higher than 12th. But in terms of just like talent assessment, the Gold Coast Suns should be getting close to moving up the ladder, and I think Daniel Rioli is a good move for them. Like I said, they paid through the nose by most standards, but Gold Coast don't really have the same need for pick six. They don't operate in the same market for talent. So all in all, they did well to get their man. Richmond were in the right place at the right time. Good move for everyone involved. I think he's a gun, but he's not a star. Jake Stringer probably goes in short-term value um, purely because of his age. I mean, I think, you know, 40 goals, he could still add quite a lot to GWS. So I'm, I'm considering putting him up here, but more or less, you, you look at short-term value. I mean, Essendon was unwilling to sign him for a second year on top of the one year he had there. And that just implies that there is some possibility that a player who reaches his early mid-30s starts to fall off. So while he could actually really add something in the short term for GWS, I think the short-term element of it puts it in this category, but you know he's still a very good player. At least that's my opinion. I think if you get 40 goals, sure, um, there are some criticisms about aspects of his game, but he is pretty prolific. He is potent, so I'll put him in short-term value. John Noble, probably decent pickup. Um, fringe player at Collingwood, obviously missed out on the grand final team. That was very heartbreaking. That's come out since. I've seen something by David Noble saying that John Noble took that really hard. Really unlucky not to play in that grand final, but you know it is a brutal industry and uh, obviously moved to the Gold Coast Suns where presumably they'll see him as best 22. He's not a gun, but he's a good player. He's a decent pickup and still got some years left where he can genuinely add something to the Gold Coast Suns on an ongoing basis. It's certainly not, it's certainly not any other category. Elliot Himmelberg, I might put in long shot. Um, I am probably just more skeptical that he's gonna crack too many games at the Gold Coast Suns. And while he seems to be a bit of a likely type, you know, Gold, uh, Adelaide didn't really fight too hard to keep him, if I'm not mistaken. So it's one of those moves where Gold Coast is shoring up some depth. Lacocious went the other way. So I think he'll start behind in the pecking order. And there's probably some short-term value there, you could say. Maybe he's short-term value. But then again, because he's not that old, I can't really put a cap on how long his career is going to be. And so maybe I can't say short-term. But it probably isn't quite decent pickup either. So Himmelberg, I'll be surprised if he breaks into Gold Coast's best 22 and thrives, personally. And this is just my personal opinion. But let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Luke Parker, again, probably short-term value. Um, this one I also struggle with because... He's still very good and, you know, could, well, was in Sydney's best 22, right? Um, obviously, they had a bit of a oversupply there, but then there was injuries, so everyone seemed to find the, the way back into the team. So Parker who was probably still good enough to be best 22 at Sydney and therefore still going to be a good player for North Melbourne. So I do think, you know, what he adds is probably exceeding. Like, I, I don't usually rank them in this way by putting a player to the front of the pack, but I think Luke Parker is probably one of the best veteran acquisitions we've seen in some time, probably since, like, Hodge and Mitchell found new clubs. Uh, Luke Parker is a very good player and going to be a very good leader. So still technically counts as short-term value, but who knows, does he move into coaching at North Melbourne afterwards? That could be a bit of a longer-term assessment. Um, Sam Mitchell did that at West Coast, although that didn't really work out. Caleb Daniel, I would put in decent pickup. Um, I, I don't know, I, I'd imagine that Luke Parker is still going to be a better player next year, but it's the fact that Daniel's a few years younger. He's 28, just on the right side there. And I think on a three-year deal, I'm informed that was what it went down as, even though it was reported to be four. So I'd say decent pickup, you know, best 22 player, cost a second rounder. Um, I don't know if he counts his gun anymore. I think he's fallen away a little bit. He could recapture that. But at this point in time, I think the player Caleb Daniel is right now, 
puts him as decent pickup. I'd probably put Matt Owies in this section too. Um, probably, I thought a little undervalued this trade period. In the end, he was involved in a trade no one would thought would get accepted, which implies that he might've been expensive. It's hard to categorize that. But in terms of what value he adds to West Coast, I, mean, I don't think he's a gun, but he did kick 33 goals. And when you compare that to other small forwards, that's pretty good. Um, and short-term value, he's 28. So in the same category as Daniel there, I'm not saying necessarily that Owies will be as good as or better than Caleb Daniel. I don't think he's as talented that as a Caleb Daniel, let's be real. But, um, you know, three-year deal at West Coast. I think there's a reasonable expectation there. He slots into the best 22 for West Coast and improves their potency. So again, I think that exceeds short-term value. Tom Barris is one I'm struggling with here. Is it Eagles bias for me to say star talent? Or is that flattering Hawthorne more than West Coast? I think he kind of sits between star talent and gun. I think he is probably being a key position player too. I think he's a better player than any of these guys, to be honest. And maybe that's some Eagles bias there, but I do think that. But I don't know, given he's never won an All-Australian, he's gotten close, I think, in 2022. But given he's never won an All-Australian, I suppose Bailey Smith hasn't either. But I probably do think Bailey Smith probably has more star potential than that. So this is where it gets iffy around my opinion of their potential. But like I said, this is always going to be a little bit subjective, right? I wish I could put a category in between these ones. Um, poor. I do think he's probably underrated outside of WA and that will probably change now. Is, it, is that Hawthorne? I'm going to say star talent. Ah, I know that might cop some criticism. And, you know, you might say Eagles bias. Maybe there is there. But at the same time, we just lost him. So there would be enough motivation for me to talk him down to. I think if I'm being honest, and you can criticize this opinion, I do think he is a higher caliber of player than anyone mentioned there. Dan Rioli might be the best one of this group. And maybe the gap's not that big. But the key positional element to me as well probably just elevates the value of it. So... Yeah, super subjective, but I do think Hawthorne will be very happy they have Tom Barris, you know, halfway through the season, they'll be stoked. Isaac Cumming, this might be debatable, but I, I have him as gun. I think he is a gun. Um, I think he's missed a fair bit of footy through injury, um, but maybe doesn't have the profile of some of these guys, but I think he's on the on the same category as, as Battle and, and Perryman and, you know, potentially Baker as well. He's less accomplished than a Dan Rioli. He certainly exceeds decent pickup, I reckon, in my personal opinion. I think he's going to be a very good player, free agency, so 26. Um, but, but he's obviously not a star talent either, so I'm comfortable with that one. Neil Bullen, um, tough one, tough one. I think he's very good. He came third in Melbourne's best and fairest and um, you know, added a lot as a midfield rotation, hit the scoreboard. Um, he's 29 by next year, so does that matter? I mean, I just said Tom Barris is a star, so we're rating it on the player. Is he a gun? Is he as good as Liam Baker? I am, uh, po like, possibly. I think he's better than Jack Graham. He's more accomplished. Yeah, he's better than all those players. I would say Neil Bullen probably is a gun. He is a gun, I reckon. Third in the best and fairest, obviously mitigated by the fact that Melbourne had a few injuries, namely Petrarca and, and Oliver didn't have his best season. So he's not Melbourne's third best player. Uh, but that being said, I think he is clearly above this category. Joe Richards, decent pickup, I would say. Firmly in that category. Uh, he's played nine games. Um, yeah, it's not going to be short term. He's fairly young. I think he's like 22, maybe he's 24. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, what I've seen of him, he's got some talent. He's certainly not going to be elevated to gun. I think this one is stock standard. Decent pickup. He could be a good player. Um, I don't think he's a long shot to add value. I think he will be a decent player for Port Adelaide, but we'll see. Jack McRae is a tricky one. Maybe short-term value. I think if you hold the standard, if they're over 30, which um, maybe shouldn't be applied black and white, but McRae also fell out of the Bulldogs team this year and he's 30. So decent pickup might be putting it a little bit much. I don't know if St. Kilda's intention is for him to elevate them as a team or is he there for a big body for stability they've got a fair bit of young talent of that team a little bit hard to really ascertain there i think if you're still in the form of his life i would elevate him but he has fallen off a little bit as a player um so decent pickup i mean could he play to 34 if he plays to 34 maybe maybe that's a decent pickup that's hard to really forecast so i'm gonna say short-term value given he's 30. So we're left with matt kennedy and jack lacocious who do i want to go for i'll say matt kennedy is a decent pickup to be honest. Uh, certainly not a gun, um, but still young enough to add more than short-term value. And he's definitely not a long shot to add value. Uh, so the Bulldogs have kind of shuffled Kennedy in, McRae out, got a couple of extra years there, maybe a little bit more defensively minded than a McRae. Uh, maybe that's their thinking. Um, I like this move for the Bulldogs. Failed to get O'Halloran, 
Kennedy is a decent pickup, I think. So then you got Lacocious, and this is this is tough because I have an opinion on Lacocious, but it may just contradict some of the logic I've said about other players, but then it just comes down to my opinion of that specific player. And I think he is a gun. I think he is a gun, and I think he's going to be a good player for Port Adelaide. Should they find a role for him that is best suited to his talents and support him around that as well? So is he a number one key forward? Probably not. Um, but he could be a good second or third banana. And Port Adelaide probably have another good second or third banana in Georgiata, so it's awkward to really forecast how it's going to go. But he was picked two in 2018, kicked 38 goals a couple of years ago. I think he's a good player. I, I don't think decent pickup does him justice. I don't know if he's star talent. He certainly hasn't proven as much as the guys ahead of him. But he's a very good player uh, on potential. So again, this is one that I'm just putting a disclaimer on. It's potential. Bailey Smith is not as decorated as a Dan Houston, and Jack Lacocious is not as proven as a Dan Rioli. But I think on talent, he clearly exceeds the decent pickup. I think he could be a very good player. I suppose we'll see in time. So there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. We're, of course, going to disagree on quite a few of these. Um, I think I talked about Bailey Smith in my last video, and I got a few comments saying I think he's overrated, and that's fair enough. That's your opinion. But let me know if that's what you think. If, if you think I'm overrating Jack Lacocious, the Tom Barris one, I do acknowledge I kind of wish we had a category in between the two, but I'm not going to make a category just for one single player. But this is just my talent assessment, I suppose. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.